Hey all welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, of course. Today, it's a little bit different video. We're going to talk about food prep, uh, food storage, and a couple different options that you have. We're going to compare dehydrators, food dehydrators, versus a uh, freeze dryer. So, what, the, what you can get out of them and um, what they actually can produce. Alright guys, I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter. Just to let you know guys up front, it is hot out here today and I'm not going to, this is not going to be a really, really long video, but I do want to touch on some of the basics on food storage, food prep, especially when you're talking about food dehydrators like this one here and uh, actually a freeze dryer, which I have in my office running a batch right now. I want to talk about the differences in the two methods and uh, what they actually can do, what you can produce with them, and what they're good for. Um, a lot of people think there's not much difference between a dehydrator, which is what this is, and a uh, freeze dryer, but there's quite a bit of difference. And they produce totally different products. Even though you would think that uh, removing the moisture from food is the same no matter how you do it, that's not the case. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute with, uh, with uh, some comparisons and some food that I produced with both of these methods. So first off, this here is uh, you know, a pretty decent food dehydrator. I actually got this off of um, Amazon. It's an Alterian. I actually did a video on this for Amazon, uh, on Amazon. And I didn't do it for the, from the company that didn't pay me to do it. I did it because I bought this and I liked it. One of the things I like about this uh, dehydrator is that it's got plenty of space. It's got eight racks in here, so you can put plenty of food. And uh, it's really simple to use. Anybody can do it. You just pretty much pick the, uh, the temperature and the time you want to run and let it go. It's very... Uh, very easy to use, fit spot anywhere, it's very light, you can move it around very easy. One of the things uh, dehydrators, the advantage dehydrators have over freeze dryers is A, the price point. This is um, very cheap, I think it was uh, $200 or so, um, and holds a lot of food like I said. And it's very light, I can move it around, I don't have to have a special space for it. I can just plug it right into any outlet and it'll work. Um, so very easy to use, like I said. So, but with that trade-off, you have very limited on what you actually can do with this as far as food storage goes. Now, they do produce great beef jerky and some type of freeze-dried or uh, dried fruit. I wouldn't say freeze-dried, but I'm going to show you the difference between dehydrated fruit and freeze-dried fruit in just a second. And then you're going to kind of see uh, the difference uh, what they produce as far as the same type of product goes. But back to dehydrators, like I said, you can do uh, a, a good amount of things with it. Um, like I said, beef jerky is probably one of the bigger things I like to make with this. Um, I did do some, uh, some fruit and stuff like that, but since I have a freeze dryer, the freeze dryer produces a lot better dried fruit than the uh, actual dehydrator does. And I'm gonna show you that right now. But let's talk about the dehydrator or the freeze dryer right now. All right, guys. So this is the uh, freeze dryer here, and this it comes on a pallet, comes on a truck, so it does have considerable size. This is a medium, um, like I said. It has the ability to hold four full trays. The trays are about seven and a half inches wide and about eighteen inches long, so you can have a decent amount of space to put some food in here. So, but it does take up a lot more space. And like I said, you do have to have it inside. Um, it does need to be in a dedicated space. It does heat up the room that it's in too. So you got to have um, have it in a spot where it doesn't get too hot. It's not going to bother you because it is kind of loud. It's got a vacuum pump and it's got a refrigeration unit. So it does make a lot more noise than a food, food dehydrator. And you got to kind of think about where you're going to be putting this beast. But um, I put it in my office, and uh, like I said, it's good to have a fan blowing into it because even in an office-type room, it can heat the room up, and then you'll get an, uh, 
uh, error code saying that the room's too hot. Um, like I said, it, it wants to have uh, you know pretty much a cool room. So if you put a fan right there next to the where the uh, coolers are, it'll work. Also, the product you do get is a lot better. And these are strawberries that I did. These are freshly picked and freeze dried, and they look just like brand new, um, but they're completely dried. They have all the uh, nutritional value as when they uh, actually went in the freeze dryer. Uh, you can't get that in a dehydrator at all. But also you have the ability to do things like uh, ice cream that you could never do in a dehydrator because it would just melt. But in a freeze dryer, you can dry ice cream. These are completely dried. And um, even though they're, you have no more moisture in them, they pretty much look the same, but when you go in to bite into this, it's very, very dry and crunchy, but uh, just like astronaut ice cream. So there's some of the things about the freeze dryer. Let's get back to the dehydrator and talk about that some more. It is a little bit more expensive. I would say it's, you know, I have a medium and it sits right at a $2,800 from Harvest Right. You're kind of limited. Uh, there's only really one manufacturer of freeze dryers uh, uh, retail for the U.S. and that's Harvest Right. So you're kind of locked into that one company. But um, what the freeze dryer can actually do compared to a dehydrator is hands uh, down a lot better and more uh, more uh, diversified than what you can do with a dehydrator. Um, it does take up some space. They are heavy, so they're about 100 pounds. You got to have a dedicated space for it. They're loud. They don't like the heat. You got to kind of keep them cool, keep a fan on them. But the food and the things you can do with it are, are so much more diverse and so much better than just a basic food dehydrator. All right, guys, so let's talk about the processes that both of these uh, use. The dehydrator uses just plain evaporation. And what that is, it'll actually just, uh, it's, it's pretty much like a convection oven. It heats up to about 140 to 160 degrees, depending on what you're doing. And then it has a uh, fan in the back that moves the air around. So it's pretty much just straight evaporation, uh, nothing very fancy, and it just takes time. And with the evaporation process, though, a lot of your nutritional value actually leaves the food uh, when it's evaporating the liquid that's in there. And it also turns it into something uh, a little less desirable sometimes. Now the freeze dryer on the other hand actually uses a process called sublimation and what happens is it freezes the food in the chamber uh, down to like a minus 30 and minus 40 degrees but it also pulls a really heavy vacuum and um, during the vacuum uh, freezing process the uh, trays start to get heated up and what happens is the moisture inside the food actually turns into gas and it leaves the food uh, pretty much with all the nutrients in it. So instead of it just evaporating out, it actually sublimates out. And while it's in the food, it turns into a gas and that's how it leaves the food. So totally different process, a lot more complicated, of course, but it leaves the food in better shape with a lot more of the nutritional value in it. So evaporation versus sublimation, very simple. But I wanna take that and show you banana. <laughs> Now this is a banana I did using the freeze dryer and as you can tell it pretty much looks like pretty much the same from when I cut it. You know, um, put them right next to each other here. Actually I'll let you get a little closer so you can see them. Um, one, the dehydrator actually it got uh, discolored because it was sitting out in the oxygen so it got um, oxidated there so it's got a different color. This is the freeze dried one, and it actually removed 98.9% .9 of the uh, moisture uh, from the banana. And I'm gonna take a bite out of that, and that goes right through, really crunchy. Like I said, this removed a lot more moisture. It's not rubbery, it just snaps right in half. One of the things too is when you dehydrate or even uh, use the freeze dryer on stuff like this, if you're in a very humid area or if your house is very humid, once you freeze dry it, you want to make sure you put it in a bag and uh, put a uh, moisture absorber in there pretty much right away because this will start 
sucking up moisture out of the air right away. So even though this was freeze dried, it's like a sponge. It will start sucking moisture back in out of the air. So you don't want to leave these sitting out. You want to make sure you put them in a bag. There's a lot of things you can do with these uh, freeze dryers as well. One of the most popular things now is people buy the freeze dryer and they actually can freeze dry candy, ice cream, some other things, fruits and vegetables, and sell them online or at festivals under cottage law. This here is a gummy, a nerd gummy uh, candy, and they're called Nerds Gummy Clusters. And if you see what they do here, they actually, this is like a gummy type candy, and it, when you freeze dry it, because of the vacuum and the heat, it actually puffs up, turns it into something completely different than uh, what it was when you bought it at the store. So people actually love this. You can do that with uh, Jolly Ranchers, Gummy Bears, all kinds of different candy, caramels. They actually puff up, they turn into something totally different. Instead of something that's chewy and gooey, it turns into something that's crunchy and it actually concentrates the sugar so it actually tastes a lot different. So that's a lot of, a lot of people do things like this. They'll make, um, they'll freeze dry food, fruit and candy and stuff like that. And you can sell it under cottage law. All right guys, so that's about it. I wanna just kinda touch on this stuff. I'm starting to sell some of the uh, freeze dried candy and ice cream and, and stuff online. So you can check out the Fire and Water Cooking store on my Fire and Water Cooking website and there'll be a link below. Check out the other stuff I got on there. I'm starting to market my seasonings now, my seasoning bleds that I've been creating for years. But check it out, guys. I want to, uh, if you've got any questions about dehydrating versus freeze dryers and what the costs are, there's plenty of stuff online about it. But you can also um, check out my vacuum sealer group online. I'll put a link to that as well. As well. I've started to talk about freeze drying and all kinds of vacuum sealers. You can use those in conjunction with each other, but that's about it, guys. I didn't want to, this to be a really long video. Just wanted to kind of show you, to tell you the difference between the two. A lot of times people go, yeah, the dehydrator costs a lot more, a lot less upkeep, but there's a lot of things that the dehydrator can't do that the freeze dryer can, and that the freeze dryer does a lot better than a dehydrator. Both are good options, but if you want to do more, have a better product at the end, Look at a freeze dryer. Um, like I said, for mine was like right about three thousand um, dollars when it was delivered. So if you uh, you know turn around and try to sell some stuff online or something to make it uh, make use of it, you know you can get your money back out of it really quick. Food savings as well. With the inflation is going as high as high as it is right now, um, you can you know buy in bulk, freeze dry stuff. So you can have that food sitting, uh, sitting in your closet waiting for you, uh, you know, when the prices keep climbing and climbing. So that's it, guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the Fire and Water Cooking channel. And I'll see you again on the next Fire and Water Cooking video. Thanks, guys.